ਅਸਲਾਮੁਅਲੈਕੁਮ who actually just uh, made her way back to world this morning as well ladies and gentlemen she happens to be miss maheen jafri and i happen to be shazad ehsan khan and we hope and pray that everybody out there in 46 different countries whether you live in those countries or not wherever you may probably be that you're doing wonderfully well and that you're ready to kick start your day with yes. us hello miss maheen how are you doing today assalamu alaikum shazad i'm perfectly fine hope you all are well how are you shazad and where were you yesterday well i think so far so good alhamdulillah i've been uh, lucky that you know right after ramazan i was looking forward to a lot of work alhamdulillah and you know as soon as we were back from eid alhamdulillah you know there was quite a lot of work for me which i was supposed to do but okay. ladies and gentlemen recently for all of those people who are out there who kind of want to know what we have been up to so i have recently featured into one of uh, sara ali bagga's music video we were oh, shooting for that in lahore congratulations for thank that thank you very much thank you very much and i hope that it comes out good the name of the track is bevafaiya so i want people to kind of uh, make sure that you check out sara ali bagga's pages or my pages as well for so that matter the video matter. has been completed shazad the video has been completed now it uh, obviously went into editing wow. and everything so i hope that when it comes out everybody's going to love it but what about you how was your ramazan how was everything well ramazan was great of course and uh, we had a lot of celebrations at eid and of course we the eid kind of extended till a week yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. so now we're back in business and uh, today was uh, wonderful actually shazad because so how did you start your day Oh uh, Shahzad prayer is important but I think I was uh, focusing more on meditation wow. and those uh, you know positive energies and wh- when there's uh, you know a thought process in your uh, prayer that becomes a meditation Well I I certainly don't know whether you need a thought process while you're praying or not or whether you really need to no, put it aside It's like it's like it's like you calm down your brain yeah, yeah, You obviously. don't have to think anything and you have to be in a certain state of mind that puts you on that place on that pedestal pedestal where you think you're actually in that state and there are also prayerful moments shazad really and for example uh, ladies and gentlemen if you're looking at a beautiful or glorious sunrise uh, you might be quiet and you might be you know that just looking at that awe inspiring scenery and might not be saying anything but that as well could be a meditative moment <laughs> And exactly and i i believe it's very important and thank you very much for saying that because in addition to that this is something i would certainly want to say that you know a lot of times we do hear that you know that husbands and wives get into a lot of arguments but ladies and gentlemen just being around each other and not talking should be okay as well, <laughs> well you know well i didn't mean that <laughs> <laughs> but no, all right i, I think it's a great start to the day ladies and gentlemen positive energy for everyone who's out there please make sure that you guys actually kind of have this feeling inside your own heart and then kind of extend it to other as well but ladies and gentlemen first things first we have some news updates for you let's see where the day will take us but first things first ladies and gentlemen obviously we really need to kind of talk about our very efficient prime minister shahbaz sharif sir because he's ordered immediate restoration of ncoc prime minister shahbaz sharif has ordered the revival of national command and operation center in the wake of rising cases of covid-19 taking notice of increase in number of cases from sub variant of omicron the prime minister has ordered the national health ministry to submit report on the current situation of coronavirus and now we'd uh, be talking about covid-19 of course uh, the vaccine makers how they're shifting their strategies and of course that as well is in news and uh, they're planning for a smaller more competitive booster shot market after delivering as many doses as fast as they could over the last 18 months in the coming year most covid vaccinations will be booster shots or first inoculations for children which are still gaining regulatory approvals around the world well i don't know whether uh, you know obviously the boosters uh, are important ladies and gentlemen please make sure that if you do have friends around you who really haven't gotten themselves inoculated please make sure that they do in the first place and then god forbid if we are seeing that a sub variant is going to come up as well we really need to protect ourselves we need to make sure that we follow all the sops because now everybody knows them by heart so please make sure that you abide by them and never go against them if you love the people around you but along say that i think we really we need to talk about the person who actually just bought twitter you yes, know let's exactly. talk about spacex ladies and gentlemen because when we talk about spacex the capsule splashes down bringing four astronauts home from six month mission 
The third long-duration astronaut team launched by SpaceX to the International Space Station has safely returned to Earth, splashing down in the Gulf of Mexico off Florida to end months of orbital research ranging from space-grown chilies to robots. Wow, I think that was the best news article I've read today. And moving on towards sports, uh, and I love it. Do you, do you want to do it or do yeah, you want me to do it? No, I it? think it's your department. Why don't you do it? All right, I, I don't think that, you know, that it's actually my department. It can be anyone's department. But ladies and gentlemen, here it is. You know, Shan Masood wins PCA Player of the Month award. Pakistan's left-handed opener, Shan Masood, who's representing Derbyshire in the ongoing county championship 2022, who scored back-to-back -back double centuries in April has been voted the PCS Player of the Month, has won the Professional Cricketers Association Player of the Month Award for April. Wow, it's wonderful. And you know, in addition to that, Shan Masood might be closing up to a record which was made back in 1988. And these were the new that we shared with our viewers. So what do we have for today for our audience? I think first things first, we really need to head out towards a short break. But when we guys come back, ladies and gentlemen, we really need to kind of talk about how we really need to impart some wonderful skills for our wonderful women over here who coexist with us. And we really need to kind of make sure that we empower them with digital skills and kind of give them a reason to earn a living while being at home. But after a break. Welcome back and we were talking to you about the news, what's happening in Pakistan before the break. Uh, but Shaza, there are a few things that you also talked about, like the role of women and how we need to empower them, especially digitally. And, you know, we have this notion, this mindset in our uh, society that women can't do much. They can't be good drivers or they are not so very technical and things like that. But, uh, but I think we need to change this mindset. Uh, because we have amazing women in our homes talk about mothers. We also celebrated Mother's Day. So why not we see them as leaders in our society? And that could happen only with uh, someone who's sitting right here beside us. Why don't you introduce And before I introduce, ladies and gentlemen, just in connection with what uh, my wonderful colleague said, I mean, to be very honest, you know, as a father of three daughters, what I see for themselves is them empowering themselves too, obviously. But for that, I really need to give them that support system, which kind of gives them a conducive environment to do something for, of their own. And that too, keeping in mind how, you know, the times of COVID were and how people were jobless, how, you know, they were cuts within the salaries as well. I think the husband and the wife in the entire household really needs to come together in making sure that they have some good, uh, source of income and to generate that I think it shouldn't always be one person's responsibility and the shift is already there if we see world over now for women over here in Pakistan obviously as much as I want the entire environment to be safe and con conducive for them and inclusive at the same time we really need to kind of empower them digitally True. and to do that I think uh, we're very lucky that we've actually been joined by somebody who happens to be a social entrepreneur and a founder and CEO of Circle Women. Ladies and gentlemen, she happens to be Ms. Sada Fabid. Hello, Assalamu Alaikum. Good morning and welcome back. Good morning, Assalamu Alaikum. It's great being here. Thank you very much for joining us. It's wonderful to have you over here. First things first, you know, I certainly want you to kind of speak about why do you think digital literacy is so important for women? Because I, I see that it's equally important for anybody who's uh, living within this sphere as well. So please yes. go ahead. 
True. I think the pandemic has actually highlighted the need for digital literacy even more than before. True. We know this, that under the pandemic, we were all cut off, and it was all really through digital communities that we started engaging. True. Right. And our parents, our elders were cut off because they didn't know digital literacy. Similarly, women at the bottom of the pyramid are not digitally literate. True. And uh, this became very clear to me under the pandemic, and that's where I thought, let us bring basic digital literacy. Now, what do we mean by this? How to use the internet? Internet is such a big resource channel, you know, access to skills, knowledge, ideas, communities. So we teach them that. True. We teach them how to create email IDs, how to use WhatsApp for business, Google Map, you know, coming over here. I use this the Google so Map important. to get here. Yeah, so basics. And then moving on to setting up businesses, micro small businesses from home. Nowadays, you don't need physical shops. In mm. fact, we're seeing all over the world offices shutting down, taking smaller spaces, cutting on costs and going virtual. Okay. So uh, we are teaching women uh, in, formal, in the in informal economy how to set up small businesses from their home, whether it's a food business, it's a makeup, beauty, uh, all sorts of products and we're seeing great results. Wonderful. I am so proud of these women wow. out there who right. are creating shifts in their families. Right, right. Uh, sort of uh, starting from microfinancing, you started it uh, 22 when you were 22 and that idea coming from Bangladesh and you had to apply it against the context and culture of Pakistan. What kind of challenges did you feel that you have here? Uh, especially looking at the women, we don't see many decision makings in women and what kind of leadership roles did you see and what were the challenges? You know, there are many challenges. I mean, even today, I'll tell you, sometimes I go to meetings and I'm the only woman. Right. You know, I, I, I was on the board of a bank, I was the only woman. So it's hard. I mean, even for an educated woman like myself, I went, I got a scholarship, I went to Harvard, I've done my undergrad at Mount Holyoke. So I've, I've been very blessed that I've gone to great schools. Yeah. But bringing your voice in, that is what matters. It, it, it's challenging, and especially when you're alone, you know, you have to build allies. So that's my message to women, build allies, believe in yourself, experiment, take risks. We have to put ourselves out there because when we put ourselves out there, we're creating space for other women. Mm. That's really important. And I think uh, Pakistan will prosper and benefit if there are more women in leadership roles because women bring different perspectives, different exactly. ideas mm. to the table. Exactly. And in, in addition to that, you know, what I would certainly want to ask you is, you know, just the way I said that, you know, it's equally important for the uh, husband or the wife to come together and make sure that, you know, that they kind of have more income streams as well, because we have seen amidst yes. COVID, you know, it was a lot of problem. And then, you know, we live in a country, God forbid, where women, majority of the places are underpaid as well. You know, they yeah. might be doing the same job yeah, as, exactly. as any other gentleman, but will still be unpaid. And not over here at PTU where we get equally paid, you know, for <laughs> yeah, viewers yeah. who are out there. We set an example for other mm, women as well and other people. Absolutely. How do you think in those terms, do you think you, you're going to agree to what I'm trying to say over here? Because earlier, you know, it was all about specialization. You know, you would go to, go to an oncologist, you know, for a cancer problem or mm. something other than that. But when it comes down to us living, you know, I think that the survival of the fittest exists over here. You know, you certainly have to talk about anything and everything as well. And whatever opportunity come towards you, you really need to seize that. How do we prepare women or people in particular that you know that you should always be ready to seize an opportunity? Great, great point. So I set up Circle, which is a non-profit with the vision that we need to bring more women in the economy True. and we need to create inclusion. Uh, Pakistan has one of the lowest female labor force participation rates in the formal economy, twenty five percent. Bangladesh forty percent. GDP is doing very well. And in there's Bangladesh. a higher percentage who are unaccounted for as well. Of course, the women in agriculture they're not accounted for. Mm. Child care, all of those things are not accounted for. But as you said, uh, uh, in the workforce there are many challenges that women mm. face. So that's why we set up Circle to create an ecosystem for women and to build men as allies, men Wonderful. as partners, Wonderful. organization as partners. Such a great point. Yes. To not look at women like a competition and look down upon them and maybe think that they are allies and partners and they can exactly. do maybe better than men in many uh, yes. And then at Circle, how do you do it? Yes. So, uh, uh, for example, one of our flagship initiatives is She Loves Tech. Yes. Uh, yeah. She Loves Tech is now the world's largest women and startup company. How, uh, how much did you generate? $1.8 million? So, yes, one of our runner-ups, uh, Dr. Saira Medicu, uh, her startup, she uh, has raised investment of $1.8 million wow. That's wow. just huge. in the last couple of wow. weeks. Uran, another startup, raised $3 million a year ago. Wow. So, uh, so this is really positive. Women startups raising investment, but it's not easy. Yep. And uh, She Loves 
tech was created so that we can build what you were talking about, an ecosystem to support women, to bring in partners. So we have organizations like UNDP, HBL, who are supporting this because, you know, it's not a one person job we yeah, all as not. a society businesses have to come together as banks we have to come together so we can give access to women because when women prosper we all win True. women invest back in education nutrition health care of their families exactly. yeah. so she loves tech is now in its sixth year Marketing. and it is growing this year we will open it up and we will have local rounds in major cities but we also go to areas like Hyderabad, Sakhar, Gilgit, Baltistan to encourage women to believe in themselves to explore technology to look at solutions using tech. Wow, it's wonderful. And you know, while we talk about uh, Sheila's tech as well, I think I would certainly want to pick up on, you know, do you think that, you know, these uh, previous two years when the COVID actually existed and we coexisted amidst COVID as well, was it a great time for Sheila's tech to kind of uh, explore and have more people on board? And then what, what was your mindset, you know, to, you know, kind of make sure that Sheila Tech actually is going to kind of uh, reach out to majority of the women out there so that they can kind of come together right. and have their own resources? Yes. So, you know, initially, of course, like all of us, I was also very worried and concerned how will, what will happen because our winner traditionally goes to China to yep. represent the country. Everything got closed uh, in this period, but we went online. We were very forward in that sense that we took all our uh, initiatives online and actually interestingly enough it gave us greater reach so last year we were able to reach out to 25,000 women right. through That's panels amazing. discussions workshops boot camps around digital around coding around entrepreneurship we got experts mentors so we have a big community now True. and it's really because of our partners across the country from academia to incubators accelerators mentors who support these women startups yes. so Sort of, how do you uh, strike a balance? There's a very thin balance between being creative, uh, trying to stay in that line, and also being uh, technical at the same time. You know, the systemization or mm. the d digitization that you just talked talked about. So, what kind of people do you need on board to build you that kind of team? So that, uh, okay, you have an idea, you can execute it, but then uh, you need, uh, you know, certain uh, sure. people who are professionals. Human resource. Yes. You know, yes. There's a lot of stuff. Yes. I mean, it. that's a great question because this is really important when you're bringing in building an organization yep. that you want to last beyond you you mm. know that is what we want we want to build entities that are be there beyond us exactly so I've been investing in our team in our culture in our core values so each time I hire I tell people you know come with a commitment towards the mission yeah. the yeah. mission of empowering women and youth of our country the mission of making a difference to Pakistan's economy you know this is our country we want to make a difference over here so uh, don't treat it as a job uh, so, so we spend a lot of time in finding the right people. I'm very blessed. I have a very strong uh, management team who's there, who's holding fort. And uh, for example, in our digital literacy program, we've set a big, big goal. We started it with UN Women Support. Yes. We've tested it with Mixed 500 COVID, yes. women. Yes, under COVID. Uh, it's done online. We give data bundles to women sitting at home wow. so they can actually join in from the comfort of their homes because we know mobility is an issue. So they do not even have to pay mm -hmm. for their internet? They, no, we give them a data bundle so they can experiment because these are very low income women. Wow. So that we're going out, Jhang, Khanewal, you know, Bahawal, Nagar, and, and even villages three hours away from these areas. Do they have smartphones? What about the availability of that? Yes. Because there are many families that we say they don't even support, have, you know, women you know, having smartphones. She looks phones. so sad while talking about that they do not <laughs> yeah. have. I am, I am generally, uh, <laughs> yeah. you know, but it, you know, it makes you see, me you sad. see, because smartphone, I feel now is not just a socialization tool; it's a business tool. True, yeah, it and has that's the mindset one. we want to bring to Pakistanis. Think about Facebook as a business tool, True. WhatsApp as a business tool. Uh, women's access is restricted by men in their families. Right. That's they right. think this that's is why a, I was sad. this is just you know a waste of time or giving too much uh, you know freedom or harassment, yeah, bullying yeah, online. Yeah. These are real challenges also. But yeah. we train on digital safety. And we also talk about business for the family and yep. we engage men as partners. And our big goal now is one million women. You wow. know, this is important to engage basically men or the family or the, you know, <laughs> yes. people you know, in who need to, to support what, uh, women. What I there. wanted to tell over here is, you know, because when I pinpointed that she looked very sad, you know, I think we still need to be sad because whether they had a smart, smarter phone or not, you know, they're still not allowed to kind of yeah. use or, you know, do whatever activity they intend to do. Yeah, so but that, I like the idea over here. here. You know, the idea is very big. And, you know, I must tell you, ladies and gentlemen, that it's taken me years to actually take inspiration from people and imagine that Ms. Sadaf actually spoke about something where she said that it should be beyond us. And you know, that's something which you are actually looking for 
in life. You know, you want to do something which is going to stay over here for a longer period of time and that more people will join, benefit from it. So you're Absolutely. not thinking about yourself in the first place. So thank you very much for putting that that way as well. But now let's come down to for women who've actually started, have, who have initiated their own businesses or their startups as well. Because my wife just very recently started an online business and the biggest challenge is that we cannot get the money back on time. And you know, it's usually a huge problem. Mm -hmm. yeah, you know, so is. you are obviously committed you know, with different people, you know, they have these contracts with you that they will pay you. But then since it's online, you cannot get your hands on to them. So it's a bigger challenge. How do you think that ecosystem, your ecosystem works where, God forbid, nobody's going to malfunction? Mm -hmm. So, you know, so so basically we are encouraging women to build discipline in their businesses. Yeah. And we're creating networks like that. And yes, uh, Pakistan has seen a lot of online business just happen in the last two years. True. So I think the discipline has not kicked in as yet. It will get better. All right. People are going to adhere. Like, for example, in microfinance, women actually are better borrowers. They True. actually keep their promises True. compared to men. That's and true. we also know this. If you look at as you give bigger loans, default rate goes up, micro loans, smaller default rate. But I think credit discipline in a country like Pakistan uh, is going to get better, but it requires continuous focus by all players. And when we talk about digital skills and business skills, you know, online uh, business skills, how do, how do you think you your team is imparting that to other women because you're targeting a million women? And you know, while we're talking about your target, how much have you achieved so far? Okay, so this year our goal is 5,000 women. Okay. So we're obviously going slowly yeah, up the ladder. Know. Last year was 500, now 10 times 5,000. And we've already raised funding for this. That's very positive. Wow. We're very happy that our partners are trusting us. Okay. And we're talking to many other players to come in because the thing is we don't charge the women uh, any fee for delivering this. Yep. We That's have a team of women instructors. We make them go through the a uh, very high training program and a uh, curriculum is locally designed. It's got all uh, very good content in it, energizing, engagement exercises. And what of kind that. of content, like you talked about, developing websites and coding and things, uh, isn't this too technical for the women? So this is for the, uh, uh, we have, you see the interesting thing is we're working with different segments. Coding, programming is of course for college uh, graduates. Right. But when we come to the bottom of the pyramid, it's basic digital basic, literacy. Yeah. Okay. Email IDs, Google Maps, WhatsApp operate, for Facebook, business. You know. Literally we tell them how to download applications, how to put data on, off, starting with that. How to use internet through voice. And you is know, it all online or is it physical as So uh, well? currently it's been online, which is giving a lot of convenience to women because they're sitting mm -hmm. in Sargodha, Sahiwal, Multan, Sialkot, and they can attend this training. But we're going to go to communities from June. So wow. So yes. if I want to be a part of Circle. No, sorry. You know, because you know that will be conflict of interest. You're working for PT. You work <laughs> no, I, I would love to have you, you as a. How well, can you say it on no. television well, while working for one job? No, no, no. You know, you as a volunteer. As, well, a volunteer. as a volunteer. As a volunteer. I was of just course. putting it like, you know, I think we really need to keep it on towards a very lighter note as well. But yes. that's wonderful and it was wonderful to be in conversation. In fact, we want you. to have more volunteers and our, our website is circlewomen.co. We have a Circle Women Facebook page. So if audience is interested, please go ahead. To you learn know, more. Share it with our audience. Okay, as great. Well. well, I would love to. Uh, invite our audience to check out Circle Women website. It's circlewomen.co and Circle Women Facebook page. I'm also on Facebook as Sadaf Abed. I document our journey, our challenges, my personal struggles. It's not easy always and uh, I think it's really important to share failures, struggles so more women get inspired. But my message to women is believe in yourself and take risks. And do we have any prerequisites for that, you know, for people who will certainly be going on to all of these addresses which you just spoke about? Do you kind of ask them whether they have some minimum education or if they have any previous experiences of working online? Yes. So any prerequisites, please. So, you know, for She Loves Tech, you just need to have a business idea and have a technology component. It could be a very simple technology component and then you can apply. Applications are opening in one month. So check out Circle Women page and applications will be opening. For Circle Women, uh, for the digital literacy project, we've got the application online. For that, you just need a metric, even eighth gr grade is fine. Right. But really the important thing is passion, yes. you know, enthusiasm, the desire to improve your life and your family's life. Wow, that's Absolutely. wonderful. And even, you know, while you said eighth grade, I think you never said it with conviction because anybody who's smart yes, enough, you know, yes, who's willing. Yes, because I don't want these to be limitations. Yes. Anyone can come in. So your doors know? are open for yes, each and every yes. individual who's out there. And we've made uh, initiatives that work with bottom of the pyramid, low income women, she loves tech, which is more high tech, yep. uh, and then coding, programming under Tech Karo. 
and then how do you and, and how do you kind of judge whether you know a business idea which came to you is an original one whether it's a copy and then how do you kind of justify whether okay you know what we're going forward with your idea because that I, might be a big day yeah, for somebody you know it's a great question i'll tell you copies are great also if something has True. worked in other countries bring it here why test not? it out why, why not, not? you don't have to start again exactly. that's the beauty of a startup so we have our panel of mentors judges like we bring in people from hbl undp private sector they assess those ideas and we also mentor them because that's really important for an entrepreneur if you can get one on one time you know so you don't make the same mistakes that everyone has gone through i mean mm. i think the great thing is nowadays big people everyone wants to give time to mm. young people we want to spur and catalyze innovation that's the goal of circle to catalyze innovation digital literacy digital inclusion and financial inclusion and we really need to hop on this industrial revolution as well as german pakistan really needs to contribute maybe any field we talk about maybe even agriculture i think we really should have kind of you know way back th thought about it you know brought in some more technology so that you know our per acre yield would have increased but inshallah in days to come we'll certainly see that but towards the end one last thing and that is that you know while we spoke about each and every bit of it how do you think that you will make sure that for all of those people who are bringing in these new or newer ideas they will always be the sole owners and the proprietors of their businesses yeah. and that chila stack won't be taking out any percentage or even if That's there is a particular important. percentage you know you might require it because it's a startup and you're giving everybody that opportunity so i want people to have bigger hearts for that as well so it's not hijacking somebody's business yes. but rather promoting them with hr yes. resources whatever yes. and wherever you can help them well you know the good news is that as she loves tech uh, pakistan and as a circle we don't take any equity or anything from right. the uh, organization that is because of our generous support that we get from our donors and our partners and sponsors so hbl undp coming in enables us Wonderful. that we can create this ecosystem and because of a global association because she loves tech is a global entity 50 countries are participating uh -huh. so a lot of resources and opportunities for investment are going to be opening up to this community and not just that i think other than opportunities for investment ladies and gentlemen you will have a bigger network you know yeah. you will have more people from different regions coming together you know brainstorming so i think i it's a brilliant idea you know it, it always uh, it's actually giving me some sort of uh, vibrations already that hey you know what yes. you know you really need to kind of figure it out more as well but thank you very much for giving us thank this you. wonderful platform we call she loves tech ladies and gentlemen for all of those women who are out there please make sure because you know we uh, spoke in english you know that's how we do it on pt all well, please make sure that if you love the idea you share it with other women who might be in need a lot of times a lot of people call you know me or probably mahin or other people that you know that we are in uh, sheer need of whatever resources please make sure that you educate them about she loves tech as well and towards the end before i wrap up this segment this is a research article i read back in 2017 where the uh, the author of the article said that it's only 1% people who will always have genuine ideas newer ideas and they will be successful the rest 99% have to just copy it 100% that's it and they wow. will be successful thank you very much ms sadat so for being with us lovely thank to you be in conversation thank for you. Uh, each and every individual who's out there ladies and gentlemen please make sure that you stay tuned because once you will be an entrepreneur you know once you start to love technology you certainly need to work on your own self how that's something which we will be talking about in the next segment don't go anywhere we will Stay be right tuned. back Sitar is a plucked string instrument used in Pakistani classical music.
the instrument flourished under the Mughal Empire. Sitar is named after a Persian word, setar, meaning three strings. It derives its distinctive timbre and resonance from sympathetic strings. Bridge design, a long hollow neck, and a gourd-shaped resonance chamber. There are many popular modern styles of sitar, offered in a variety of substyles and decorative patterns. Welcome back. Uh, right before going to the break, we were talking about uh, you know women empowerment Already? and digitalization, of course, and we were talking about entrepreneurship, how that is going to empower you, and how financial inclusion is important for the economic development of Pakistan. Exactly. Well, that's <laughs> wonderful, and that's wonderful summed, uh, wonderfully <laughs> summed up as well. But ladies and gentlemen, uh, I started working when uh, I was somewhere around 15 or 16, and you know I I think that you know I was lucky enough that I had that mentorship from my father that hey, you know what, everybody towards the end of the day needs to work. But Alhamdulillah, eventually and gradually when you, uh, you know, kind of surpass all of that staircase of success, which in your brain might be that way and, you know, for people from different walks of life can represent uh, from very different styles and how they I actually kind of believe in success. But what I certainly started to think about was that now what I need to do is that I really need to make sure that, you know, other people around me benefit from me. And to do so, I was really concerned that how I need to kind of look into my own fitness, you know, may it be mental uh, fitness, may it be emotional, may it be physical, you know, so everything when it comes together will make you fit. And, you know, so I was playing polo, I was doing swimming, basketball, wow. and then I eventually I was like, hey, you know what, for, to kill all of that stress, all you need is a 100 kg deadlift, and if you do that <laughs> while you're lifting all of that weight, there's nothing which can empty wow. your brain. And well said, Chazad. And I was coming to this point. <laughs> this is so important. I wanted to say, as he was talking about mental fitness, that people here, you know, it's not a taboo. So you have to decide at that point you need to go to the doctor or you want to start a fitness rate. True, 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 true. Thank you very much for saying that because, ladies and gentlemen, you know, if you will certainly go to the gym, I think you're going to save the cost from the doctor, but you will eventually end up paying it to the gym as well <laughs> and to your trainers. But that's better. You know, at least you won't be in pain. But certainly, you know, since we have uh, eaten a lot of fried food, you know, throughout Ramazan, throughout pakora, Ramazan. samosas, rolls, kachoria, <laughs> jalebiya, you you know, all, all, all of that stuff, all. I think it's about time that we kind of come back to our normal routines and how to look after ourselves. But first, we have something to uh, share with you. Go ahead, take a look. And once you guys will come back, we have a fitness expert over here who talks about yoga more. Let's do this. Transition to a regular lifestyle after the holy month of Ramadan is recommended by nutritionists. Nutritionists urge to ensure a smooth transition to a normal diet rather than an impulsive jump to our old harmful ways, especially after Ramadan, to avoid health complications. Don't skip breakfast because after a month without a breakfast, the body needs to reconstruct itself to start eating again in the morning. Include dates with milkshakes and smoothies and fruits in your breakfast. Our dietary patterns, timing of our food intake, change our metabolism. 
most important aspect of post ramazan transition is the ability to restore metabolism by setting regular meal times keep your evening meals lighter with vegetables raw salads and whole grains to get enough fiber cottage cheese and buttermilk should be a part of your daily life since it not only helps with digestion but also helps in keeping body cool in hot weather do not eat fried foods fast food junk food or greasy and spicy foods right after the month of fasting because your body is more likely to experience acidity and indigestion water is very essential to combat the sudden changes in eating patterns longer working hours and work life routine the right way to hydrate is to space out your water consumption throughout the day aiming towards drinking 2 to 3 liters per day having rest at odd hours all month round due to distorted sleeping patterns in ramazan stay active by boosting metabolism through physical activity all right ladies and gentlemen you know so uh, we do believe in health and fitness and we want our viewers to stay fit as well which is why we very lucky that we've actually been joined by somebody He happens to be a fitness expert, ladies and gentlemen. He happens to be this is Sardar Asad Khali, Khaliq, probably. Assalamu alaikum. How are you? Good morning. Wa alaikum assalam. Good morning. Thank you very much for joining us. Wonderful to have you over here. How are you doing today? I am doing very fine, and it's a great privilege and honor for myself to be the part of uh, this lovely show and uh, having a lovely host with me. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. You know, when you're fit, ladies and gentlemen, you will always have fitter jokes as well. But first things first, you know, uh, obviously, so we're coming out of Ramadan. Everybody's had a lot of uh, oily diet, and now we want to get back in shape. Even though, you know, what I've realized <coughs> in Ramadan, nobody gains weight. And, you know, nobody loses weight and nobody gains weight, okay. the majority of the people. But I don't know about you, you know, so if you kind of differ uh, from what I said, you probably have the privilege to do so as well. What's your take on this? Because I think Ramzan is a very healthy basically month. Basically, the problem is that after the Ramzan transition, the uh, oily food and fast food, you know that the event is taking place, Eid al-Fitr event is taking place, and people are going for uh, heavy foods, and Eat. they are going for parties, and they, they take, uh, their intake is very high, and their burning, uh, burning of calories are very low. low. Definitely, they will increase the rate of fat. and uh, this rate of fat will uh, destroy their health very badly and they will caught with the disease and they will uh, go for indigestion they will go for stomach problem gas problem uh, acidity these are the major problems which are caused due to the unbalanced and unhealthy food all right so so dasa we were talking about junk food nowadays time is shrinking people are getting busier and you you see these advertisements take care these apps which are so readily food available on your doorsteps and people are not uh, you know making much effort in, uh, into making their own food so how important is making your own food and then uh, being fit and you know how important is that basically it's your life and you have to decide <laughs> what to do for your healthy life yeah, whether you life want to really what yeah. life is basically what you need it life is basically what you make it for yourself if you are too much busy you will uh, ruin your life you basically the health is wealth exactly. if you are not taking taking good care of your health and you are taking care of your work uh, it means you will lose everything once you will go to the hospital you will face the uh, circumstances you will face uh, the you will go for the uh, very uh you can say that uh, it's it's a costly basically uh, uh, basically losing your health and you money at the same yeah, time yeah costly medicines and it's a very painful process you will go, when you will go to in a hospital it's a very painful yes. process and you will know the importance of health once you so so very quickly what we we should do right now is because we short on time as well so you know please make sure that you kind of recommend us a diet that you know this diet will always help you in staying healthy and fresh and whatever you want to do you will always have the energy to do it basically after ramzan over metabolism is not restored we have to restore over metabolism working. and we have to uh, make sure that it's on the normal routine we have to go for uh, snacks and light food uh, instead of oily food uh, or junk food or you can say that we can convert into healthy food we can use vegetable and fruits instead of we are uh, using junk food yep. we, and uh, we can also uh, go for a breakfast and we healthy breakfast we can do a good breakfast but it must be a healthy breakfast and uh, in at night 
we have to go for lighter food. Right. Uh, in Pakistan, it's opposite. In at night, yeah, people exactly. are going for heavy fo food. And that right. too at it's 11. Not, it's not going yeah, around they 11. They do, do not digest properly and they face problem and they get uh, they fatty uh, liver or stomach or these all sort of problems they face and they, they were disturbed and they go to the doctor. And they exactly, and that's it. usually how people are away in Pakistan because half of the time, you know, I come across people, you know, after every three months, you know, there's a newer batch of people coming into the gym and they're like, okay, you know, we want to get fit. And, you know, as soon as they start to see results, they will leave. Ladies and gentlemen, let me remind you that, you know, making sure that you exercise five weeks a day, five, five days a week is really important. You know, that's your choice. Make it four days as well. But uh, exercising needs to be a part of your lifestyle. You know, if you exactly. want to kind of enjoy your kids, if you want to enjoy your success, if you want to be out there, please make sure that you kind of work out. You know, it actually kind of eases you from a lot of difficulties. For example, panic attacks, anxiety, stress. you know, hypertension, stress, yeah. all of these Diabetes things. Diabetes. You know, you will get rid of that. You know, you, you know, it will always help you. So why not take out an hour for your own well-being and make sure that everybody else around you is happier as well. But sir, now I have a question. For example, you know, there are people from different walks of life. I've been traveling quite a lot right after Eid as well. And, you know, I was on motorway. So I was looking for healthier options, you know. So the only healthier option I had in my mind was either barbecue or probably going to this place where we, you know, probably I'm going to say it, Subway. You know, so do you think that this was a smarter decision rather than having fast food, rather than having fried food of all sorts, which was out there, which I wanted to kind of end up having? Basically, getting enough food is not a crime. Okay. Getting enough calories is not a crime. But, the but right if calories. you are not burning... Your, care, you are, your intake is very high, right. but your burning is not balanced, then this is the crime. So this will disturb you. And in Pakistan... So are, are you recommending in a, in a that we, we can have fast food, but all we need to do is exercise? We, we have to calculate the calories and we have to so burn like, equally. Uh, there is a, there's a friend of mine, she was saying, I eat a paratha in the morning and then I don't eat anything. This doesn't sound healthy. So why me. do you even eat paratha then? <laughs> oh, why do you? Then avoid Bad <laughs> habits. No, but what's, what's your take? What's your take? Like, on one hand, we see we counting no, it's calories. Wrong, it's wrong. That's it. No, it's that's, wrong. A, that's, okay. a, that's what he's okay, saying. So you know, you only have a paratha that. early in the morning, and then for the next, uh, for the rest of the day, you're just going to go hungry. How do you think you will survive without so energy? That is extremely you need energy unhealthy. as well. You know, because when we talk about carbs, you know, carbs actually give you energy. We have a fitness expert over you here. You have to decide. You have to take care of your taste, or you have to take care of your health in a country like Pakistan the increasing rate of diseases are uh, uh, increasing day by day. Basically, the reason is that uh, here in Pakistan, no one is caring about health. If you will talk about the health budget, it's very low. Even government is not taking care of health. They, they are basically allocating 2.8% uh, budget uh, of, out of entire GDPA, which is basically uh, the worst condition and worst, worst allocation of a budget in any country, normally in, in first world countries, they... they well, uh, obviously now since we have the change of regime, obviously this government is going to look into it as well. You just by a couple of Basically, days Basically, there is a poor governance from the, from the government. Basically, there is the lack of awareness. Now, the government is not going to come to our houses and push us to the gym. Now, yeah? I think everybody no, needs no, no, to no. work for their health by themselves in the first place. You know, the government will always come in place where, God forbid, unfortunate if you have to go into the hospital, all right? You know, or probably food security when, when we talk about all of such sorts. But it is us who needs to have this mindset that we really need to make sure that whatever we're eating is healthier, whether whatever activities we indulge of ourselves in are healthier so that we protect ourselves and our future generations. You know, talking about the health system over in Pakistan, we do know, you know, people over here suffer from heart attacks. People have uh, depression these days, you know, it's, it's very common. You know, not just that, in addition to that, you know, let's, let's talk about stress, let's talk about anxiety, let's talk about diabetes. You know, all of these problems are so common. It's not because of the government told us that, you know, have as much curry as you want with as much oil as you want and with as much mutton That's as you want. That's your personal You know, I think exactly. it's, it just has been like a personal saying, choice yeah. and it is just because of the capacity. fact that our forefathers were so useful or handful of eating makhan on makhan <laughs> roti and everything. And now the medicine oil. actually tells us that, that, that it wasn't really a bad practice. So what we need to do is that we need to do a little, a little bit of myth busting as well. Moderation. Basically, 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 we are not talking about it's the 
uh, duty of government, yeah. but it's also the duty of a government uh, to build a healthy society and uh, to teach and train the... Recommend, recommend. To, how do yeah, you think to, they can do that? To teach and train the uh, common masses and they can improve the That's health what system. That's they what can, they doing. can They can improve the health information management system. They can uh, educate the people and uh, they can remove the corruption from the uh, health system. They can monitor the health policies. They can monitor the health exactly. management system. Exactly. This, in this way, they can help the people. And they can also uh, run a healthy program like they can facilitate the people. They can educate the people. They can, uh, they can uh, That's ask... That's what we are doing now today, having you yeah. over here. That's what we are doing. So, you know, I want you to kind of... You know, because we are short on time as well, we have only two, three minutes left. So I want you to kind of, you know, talk to our viewers. We go out in 46 different countries. Tell them what simple changes do they need to make to within their lifestyle so that which will actually benefit them with better health. Basically, you have to decide uh, what you have to take, what you, you have to do and what you don't. Basically, you have to uh, decide and you uh, keep yourself fit and healthy. You have to give time to yourself and if you uh, want to get rid of your uh, get rid of from anxiety depression stress and uh, you uh, want to uh, restore the energy of yourself you uh, have to go for exercise daily and you you go for 30 minutes uh, in a day and it's i think it's enough for yourself uh, to keep yourself healthy and this is the basic thing no, there is not a rocket science and no one will help you if you are not taking care of yourself no one will take care of yourself you have to take yeah, small steps if basically no. the people here in yoga in pakistan the yeah. concept is that uh, yoga is about posture posture is something else i am saying that if someone is, is in the in the business and he is doing meditation yoga and all the things postures he from last two decades he recommended uh, to his uh, students who are newly comer and he asked them to go for postures when they go they don't uh, keep their leg be behind the head or behind their <laughs> neck they yeah. they basically frustrated they 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 think that this is an impossible thing yeah. they can't do basically i what what is the main idea which i want to share with sure. you basically i want to share with my view viewers that if you want to go for yoga uh, everyone is breathing Breathing is also the kind of yoga. Yeah. Breathe, but properly breathe. Properly. Over mind is getting oxygen, and it's it's a there's a trigger, and it's shifting the this oxygen to the other organs. True. If your 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 heart needs, uh, your lungs needs proper oxygen. Yeah. If you uh, you are giving proper oxygen to your lungs and to the other organs, they will ne never ever uh, disturb. They they will aut automatically. Uh, they will uh, fight against the diseases. You will fight against the, against the diseases. And it's and wonderful. And it's wonderful, Sardar sir. Thank you very much for emphasizing on breathing. And ladies and gentlemen, it obviously helps as well. And you know, if we talk about yoga, obviously yoga is a part of breathing, which is involved in yoga as well. But thank you very much, Sardar sir, for being with us. We're very sorry that we actually had to cut you short because we were uh, short on time as well. Thank you very much, Mahi. Thank you very much. It was wonderful was to be in conversation with you too as well. Tomorrow for the next leg pulling as well. But for everybody who's out there. People, please make sure that you stay healthy. Please make sure that you reach out to other people, you know, because we did talk about Circle as well. And not, not just that, She Loves Tech as well. Please make sure you check out their websites. You know, it's our sole responsibility to make sure that we make uh, programs which will aware or bring you opportunities so that you are successful in life as well. But success comes from here from and here, exactly. ladies and gentlemen. Please make sure that you have content over there as well. And towards the end, I would love to say something that Shazad uh, said. If you want to have a healthier lifestyle, just be consistent, stay consistent, and that is how you're going to lose That's weight. That's it. <laughs> Till the next time, look after yourselves. One, two, three. Good, Good morning. morning.